Hey, how's it going? My name's Hellbent, and welcome to tutorial number four for the Auto Hotkey Graphical User Interface tutorial series. In this one, we're going to be looking at the radio button and all the different things that we can do with it, as well as some t tips and tricks to make uh, your scripting easier and uh, some, you know, some cool things like that. Um, but before we jump into it, um, I have some bad news, or maybe some bad news. Um, the the Auto Hotkey tutorial series might be dying soon. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be enough interest. It's not. It's, it has nothing to do with the amount of views because Auto Hotkey isn't exactly like uh, you know you're not going to get a million views for creating Auto Hotkey content. It has more to do with the ratio of views to likes. So you know I'll have a lot of videos that have a thousand views on it, but it'll only have 20 likes. So to me that says that. 980 people out of a thousand or like 98 percent of the people who watched it didn't like it because they didn't I mean obviously they didn't like it because they didn't take two seconds to hit the like button so they couldn't have liked it right so um, because of that I, I might just let the the tutorial series die um, if you'd like to keep them coming be sure to hit the like button uh, that's how I know that people are enjoying them, that people want me to cr keep creating more of these tutorials. So take the two seconds, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. I don't care because if you don't hit anything, I'm considering it a dislike anyways. So you might as well go all out and just hit that dislike button. But anyways, let's go into this. We're going looking at the radio button. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just add in the radio button. So the way we add it in is the same way we add in our other controls is just GUI comma add comma and then the type of control that we want. So we got a radio and then comma. This after the comma after this our control type. What we're going to be doing is our options. So our pos the, our positioning, the color of the text, uh, variable names, label calls, blah 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 blah. And then one more comma and we have the whatever text is going to be beside it. So let's just type in some generic text. Okay, so here we go we have our radio button and we can check it okay next this part next part I'm just gonna be glossing over because I covered all of this stuff in quite in detail in the first tutorial uh, tutorial number one for this series so spending the you know t 10 minutes covering it again is you know a waste of time so I expect that if you're watching tutorial number four I'm kind of expecting that you watch tutorial one, two, and three. But for the most part, if you're only watching tutorial number four, for most of the stuff is standalone. So you can probably get by with just what's covered in this. Okay, so we'll just briefly go over uh, positioning. So I'm going to change its position by doing its X and Y position in its options. And there we go, we've changed its position. Um, next, if I look here, I can see that the button is to the left of the text. If I want the button to be to the right of the text in the options, by default it's to the left. If I want to change that so that way the button is on the right, all I do is in the options just type in right. And now the button will be to the right of the text. Okay, so depending on how, how you want to uh, do your design, uh, you might want to decide that it's better to do it to the right or to the left, and that's how you do that. Um, let me see what my left and right radio groups. Okay, next is uh, creating groups. So for the most part, if you're using a radio, it's because you want to create groups where you can only select one thing. So you'll have one or two. You'll have like two things that you can select. So uh, do I want yes or no? You know click one for so if you click on yes no will be off clicked and if you click on no yes will be off clicked so it can only have one clicked at a time so that's a group uh, the way we create groups with radios is in our code as it reads through it as long as our radio buttons are beside each other so or after each other so right here I have GUI add radio if the line underneath it is another radio button it'll automatically create those two as as part of a, a group 
So we'll just do that real quick. And we'll just add in some generic text. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We have radio button one. If I click on this one, and then if I go and click on this one, it'll deselect this one and vice versa. Right? And I can create as many. Uh, my mouse is starting to die. So. I apologize for this, but uh, it just won't stay. Ah. I need to get a new mouse. I cannot. Ah. You know what? I was going to say that it's it'll be faster for me to just copy and paste, but apparently that's not the case. So we'll add in another radio. Now I know I know that you probably understand everything and I probably don't need to do this but I, I really do like to do these tutorials as in-depth as I possibly can so there's no misunderstanding I, I one of the things that I, I'm, I'm glad about is that in throughout all of my tutorials I don't think I've ever had a question in the comments having to do with the subject that I covered during the tutorial so it seems like anyone who watches the tutorial they do understand so I, I I'm pretty sure that by doing it this way there's no you have no doubt on what what's going on okay so here we go we have a group of three now let's say that I want to let me make sure I'm not covering this later on I have a, a basic lesson plan written out and I just uh, I worked I, I spent about an hour or so working on it and I just want to make sure that I don't step on the toes of something that I'm covering later. Okay, it looks like it looks like I'm okay to cover this. Okay. So the next thing is creating another group. So I have a group right now of three radio buttons. If I wanted to create another group, I have two ways that I can go about doing this. The first way is I can just add in another control of some other type. So I can do text, for example. Um, And then let me try this one more time. Come on, let me copy. Ah, nope. It just I, I don't get it. It just like it randomly decides. Okay, okay, I can take that. And I'll just get rid of this. Okay, so here we go. Good enough. <clears throat> Okay, so like I said, we can we have two ways that we can separate our groups. One is by adding a control in between them. So it goes through the script, blah, 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 comes to this control, says, hey, we're done with this group. And if I add more radio buttons in later, they're going to be part of their own another group. Okay, so here I have, I can click on those, and this is part of another group. Um, one of the cool things about this is even though this this um, control is right after these ones here I can actually position this <clears throat> so in order to do that I need to I can actually position this way 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 down so I can go let's say x5 no that's too big 400 y 400 and then that's about let me x plus 10 so I'm gonna make these all these three radios in one row and then I'm gonna have it right up close to these this set of radios right underneath it I'm gonna have another set and even though on the actual GUI they're going to be next to each other they're still going to be part of another group 
because this line is here. Even though this control is going to be way down at the bottom of the GUI, it's still separating it in the code, cre thus creating two groups. Let me just uh, X100, Y120. Okay, so like I said, here's our text down here, but because it's in the code in between them, even though it's not actually next to them in position, it still creates a separation in the groups. So here I can click one, two, three, and then if I click on this one, we can see that they are two different groups. Okay, so that's, that's one way that we can create two different groups. The other way that we can create two different groups is in the options of the first radio button so here I have three radio buttons that I want to be part of a group in the c control in the c in the options for the first one of that group I just type in the word group and then anything that follows it will be in that group until it encounters this command this uh, option again so I'm gonna get rid of this text and in the options here, I'm going to do the same. So now it knows that these two here, these two radio buttons here, are part of this group. And it also knows that this is the beginning of a new group and that this one is part of that group. All right, so... All right, so that is this is probably the preferred way that you want to um, separate your groups. But often, often in your in your scripts, you're not going to have too. I, I mean, at least for me, I don't usually have too many groups of radio buttons right next to each other like this kind of deal. So usually in the code, I'll have something else, another kind of control that separates them. So I don't even actually usually have to use the group. I can usually use that kind of text thing that I did before, but. If you want to be, uh, you know, sure of it 100% of the time, just type in group. Next, what we have is variables. Okay, so let me see if I can get rid of... Ah, I really, really hate my mouse button. I was hoping that this tutorial would only be 10 minutes. But, uh, yeah, it's not... Okay, so let me get rid of. I like to keep these tutorials specific, topic specific as possible. So all that other stuff that I had there is just going to clutter it up and be uh, something that's going to distract your eye, whereas I want to just cover one thing. Okay, so what we want to do now is with the radio button, obviously it has a checked or unchecked value. So it has not checked and it has checked and what we need to do is we need to assign that state to a variable and that state is true or false one or zero right just binary state so it's it's zero if it's not checked it's one if it is checked but we need a we need to store it to a variable so we're just going to create a variable that we're going to store it to and I like the name that I had before so let me see ah yeah So we've created a ver variable for it, put it in its options. Uh, every, if, you, if you're not familiar with this stuff, I covered this in the previous tutorials, so I'm not going to go too deep. So we have our variable, some random name, and now when we check that, uh, that's the variable that's going to store that value. Okay, so that's adding a variable. Let me see. Next is attaching our radio button to a label so let me see what I have here okay so um, this is another thing that I'm just going to cover briefly uh, it's the same as we did with buttons and uh, the edit field where we're going to attach our radio button so when they click on it it's going to be trigger a label or a subroutine so I'll just G for go to 
and then we just need a, a label name and I had a label name written there the real wow the I'm usually pretty literal with my naming when I do these. Okay, so we've made a call to it. So when we press on it, it's going to trigger this label to be executed. So I'm going to go down here now in my label section, and I'm actually going to add that in. So what did I call that? The radio button la buttons label. colon and like I said before I've covered I've covered this kind of stuff in previous tutorials so I'm just glossing over it if you are if you feel at all lost uh, I suggest you go and watch the earlier tutorials okay so here we go we have our, our label and now we're gonna show that it's actually doing something so if you're familiar with my tutorials usually I use something like a message box because it's easy for me to show you as you're watching this it doing something and if you're watching along with this and typing this out with me when you it, it just basically gives you something to to confirm that something happened right so message box it pops up so that way you can confirm that something did happen when you start scripting it's obviously not going to be well i mean most of the time it's not going to be a message box it's going to be something else that it's executing right but the message box just allows us for training purposes so now we have our radio control we've assigned it to a variable that we don't worry need to worry about right now what we're looking at right now is the label so when you press the radio button it's going to execute that the contents of that label which is just going to be a message box hello so if i run it and now when i click on this it should here let me move it over here it should hopefully execute that message box and there we go okay okay so that is attaching a radio to a label let me see what else I have in my we're getting close to the end a few more things we're at 17 minutes um, Okay, I really did want this tutorial to be only about 10 minutes, but uh, and only one part. But it looks like I still have. I'm only about halfway through this, so we're gonna. I'm gonna stop this here, and I'll continue it on in a second part. Uh, remember, if you like these kind of tutorials, if you want to see more auto hotkey tutorials in the future, or if you'd like others to have the opportunity to have to see auto hotkey tutorials in the future, be sure to hit the like button and I'll see you on the next part.